Hi, this is a potentiometer, but how does it work? In this video, we will answer that question and learn some of their common uses. Remember, as always, you can try the circuit I show for yourself with the links in the description. So a potentiometer, or variable resistor as they are also known, is simply that, a device that varies resistance. They act much the same as a regular resistor, only you can change their resistance whilst the circuit is running. This can be very useful. A potentiometer in general is made up of a long resistive element here, with a metal wiper that can move along to create different resistance values. So you can see on this pot, this is a 1k pot that can vary between roughly 0 ohms, roughly 1000 ohms, and if I move the slider along, you get a different amount of resistance either side of the wiper. Can move it down, changes again. Let's wire this thing up with a DC supply and test it. So I've added a 10 volt supply with my pot. If I now simulate the circuit, you can see the current flows through the circuit, through the supply, through the first half of the pot, which is roughly 500 ohms, and then back round. The 500 ohms is causing a current flow of roughly 20 milliamps. So if we change the pot and move it across to say 80%, so it's much more resistance is now in series of the circuit, we lower the current from 20 milliamps to 12 and a half milliamps, so much lower. If we decrease the pot all the way down to say only 200 ohms, so there's only a small amount of the resistive element actually in series with the circuit. The current increases significantly from 20 milliamps up to 50. By this point, you might be wondering why the potentiometer has three legs, given we just connect these two together on one side. Well, the main reason is that in the real world, when the wiper moves across, sometimes as it's moving, there are small amounts of dust and grit that can get caught between the wiper and the resistive element. So that if they is an extra connection on this side, even if the wiper loses connection, you don't get open circuit, you instead just get the resistance of the full resistive element here, which is generally much safer. So this is all well and good, but why don't we try and use the potentiometer to control, say, an LED. Here I've added an LED and the pot is at 50%, so if I simulate the circuit, you can see the LED is shining, but not that brightly. If I then decrease the value of the pot, you can see that as I increase the resistance, the current lowers and the LED gets less dim. And vice versa, if I decrease the resistance of the pot, the LED gets brighter and brighter, which is really useful, up until a certain point where the current gets too much and the LED breaks. Let's fix that. So, if I go back to say 30%, we know the LED is happy at roughly 26 milliamps. This LED doesn't need more than about 20 milliamps to be high current. So let's pause the simulation. I have now added a 300 ohm resistor meaning that at absolute minimum, there will always be at least 300 ohms in series. So if I now simulate the circuit, if I take this pot all the way down to its lowest value, you can see the LED is now very bright, 300 ohms at over 20 milliamps current, so it's happy as, as bright as it can be. But then if I increase the value of the pot gradually up, you'll see the LED gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer up until it almost goes out. And if we use a larger pot, say a 10K pot, you could turn the LED off completely. So here we've made the circuit much safer where there's no longer any risk of the user blowing up the LED. So we just use a pot to control current, but they're actually more commonly used to control voltage. This is a standard voltage divider circuit consisting of two 1K resistors and a 10 volt supply. I have made a video on voltage dividers before and it's in the description below. But as a quick summary, if I simulate the circuit, the 10 volts here is split evenly across both resistors, meaning that when I connect my voltmeter across here, which I'd normally connect off the rest of my circuitry, I only have 5 volts. So I've basically turned a 10 volt supply into a 5 volt source, which could be useful for all sorts of things. However, if we replace one of these resistors with, say, a 2K, just double its value, you'll see that because there's more resistance here, the voltage drop increases and we have 6.67 volts. However, if we replace this resistor with a 2K potentiometer and simulate the circuit, with the wiper in the center, there's still about 5 volts across the voltmeter. However, now if we move the wiper, say up to 80%, we've now got much more resistance this side, so the voltage drop should be higher. We're now over 6 volts, and if we lower the percentage down to say 20%, the voltage on this side should be much lower because there's less resistance, so we now only have 218 volts. We have now created a manual voltage controller, which has all sorts of uses, such as to drive into an op-amp, say, or perhaps as an audio volume controller. One other kind of common variable resistor that I will mention is a Rio stack which has only two pins and is designed specifically to control in series current, they often have much higher current ratings than potentiometers. In summary, potentiometers are incredibly useful devices with a wide breadth of applications and definitely one to keep in mind when designing your own circuits. 
Thanks for watching. Be sure to like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it, and have a good day. See ya.